Okay, so hi everybody, I'm David and this is Matt. And for our project, we wanted to use ML to take a swing at a problem in the systems world that has to do with online video delivery. So we're going to focus in particular on an effort by Netflix called OpenConnect, which is a program where Netflix gives free caching servers to ISPs so that they can store their movies closer to end customers. But the problem is, given the hardware in these things, they should be performing with a better throughput than they are. And we think part of the problem is disk I.O. So if you think about it, one of these servers is going to see tens of thousands of concurrent video requests. And this is going to amount to a swarm of random reads to the disk. If you know anything about hard drives, you know that that's uh, a recipe for disaster. So we can combat this with prefetching, but the problem is, in this particular scenario, if we prefetch too aggressively, we can actually shoot ourselves in the foot, because lots of users have short attention spans, and they close videos before they're actually anywhere close to done playing. So what we really want is a way, when a user starts playing a video, to know a priori how much of that video they'll watch, so we know exactly how much to prefetch. So what we did is we built a collaborative filtering system uh, to give us these predictions. And so we have a history of videos users have watched in the past, and we know how much of those videos they watched. And so you can think of these view times as implicit ratings. And we can feed these to our CF-based recommender system, and the recommendations we get out are effectively predicted view times for new videos. And we use these predictions to guide how much we prefetch. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through kind of a simple example of uh, item-based collaborative filtering. And so really what that means is we need to construct an item-to-item -item similarity matrix, as you can see on the left here. And uh, in our case, that will be videos, comparing the similarity between two videos. So let's say in our data set, we have only two users that both watched video one and video two. Well, then in this matrix at one comma two, we'll put a two, okay? Because we're using co-occurrence as a metric. So then what we need to do for each user is construct a vector that uh, holds kind of how much uh, of the video duration they had watched. Um, because implicitly that's our user rating, as we see in green. So if we just do matrix multiplication at that point, we get a vector on the right, which is our predicted duration for a given user, um, but we need to normalize that. Okay, so what we ended up doing was um, we got a large data set given to us um, very nicely by uh, Convivo, which is a large video distribution company. And uh, what we wanted to do was break those, uh, that data set up into different groups, such as the most active users, uh, random users and users, say, in the New York metropolitan area. We wanted to compare uh, varying sizes of those populations to our system uh, to naive baselines of average users and average videos. And we'll see in all three graphs, we're the blue. We do much better than the other two, the baselines, by a good amount. Um, we reduce error, so this is a root mean squared error, uh, by about 22%. And really what this means is that even within the area of a specific ISP, our system provides better recommendation than these baselines. Um, so really that implies that we can get better performance uh, by predicting using this system to predict our cash, how much we fetch for our cash. Alrighty, uh, are there any questions? Yeah, sure. uh, might you have a feedback problem? Because if you're rating your um, video users, case of how long they are 